we are at Surah Al-Nazirat. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem, Bismillahi Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. وَالنَّازِعَاتِ غَرْقًا وَالنَّاشِتَاتِ نَشْتًا وَالسَّابِحَاتِ سَبْحًا فَالسَّابِقَاتِ سَبْقًا فَالْمُدَبِّرَاتِ أَمْرًا صدق الله العظيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفتح قولي As I mentioned before also five surahs of the Quran start with this style وَالصَّافَّاتِ صَفًّا That was the first. Then وَالزَّارِيَاتِ زَرْوًا That was the second. وَالْمُرْسَلَاتِ عُرْفًا That was the third. This is the fourth. وَالنَّازِعَاتِ غَرْقًا And the final and fifth will be وَالْعَادِيَاتِ ضَبْحًا فَالْمُورِيَاتِ قَدْحًا فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ سُبْحًا Just as you may remember, Twenty-nine surahs of the Qur'an start with huruf-e muqattaat, letters, which are pronounced separately. Three with one, noon, qaf, saad, and so on. In total, twenty-nine surahs, they begin with huruf-e muqattaat. Five start like this. So there are various forms in which the surahs begin. Regarding the first and this fourth, there is consensus that here angels are mentioned. That surah contains an intrinsic proof also that there the angels have been mentioned. Here also there is consensus in Nazi'at that these are the angels. And the final one, Wal Adiyat, about that also there is no difference of opinion. But you know, the in between two, Zariyat and Mursalat, about the oaths of these two surahs, there are many opinions. But here it is absolutely agreed. By the angels who tear the souls of the wicked forcibly. Gharqan, the angel dive deep into the human being and then tears of the soul when it is dying. And this is for the kuffar, because their souls when they are taken and possessed by the angels, it is as if they have been torn, you know. But for the Muslims, for the believers, when na shaitat nashtan, by the angels who untie gently the souls of the virtuous and the righteous. You know, they very ease, you know, so that is the difference between how an unbeliever dies and how a moment dies. The Prophet said that the death of an unbeliever is like there's a hot rod on which there is kebab, you know, and you are just pulling the kebab off that hot rod. But as for the moments, believers, as if there was some bag of water, and only a drop comes out of it. That's all. Easily. There's no difficulty for them. But this is the inner aspect. Outwardly, there might be, even the believers when they die, they might face hard times. For, the, for those who see, they might feel that they are having a very hard time. Because we know that even the Prophet ﷺ, at the time of death, he had much of, you know, stress and he was in pain, agony, very severe headache, and all these things were there. So one is the external aspect, which is visible to the people. Other is the internal aspect. When, you know, this soul is taken away from that body. So the, the condition of the disbelievers is different from that of the believers. Then, taking possession of the souls of these people, by the angels, who then float swimmingly, they go, they are going, taking away the souls. Then they go racing with one another, they compete, I will go further, and the other is competing, no, I go first. And then they ordain the decreed affair that has been, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. 
That is where to take this soul, either towards Iliyin or towards Sijin, that we shall learn, inshallah, in Surah Al-Mutaffifin. But according to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then these angels take these souls to their destinations. Now, after these five ayat of oaths, Muqsam alayh, on what these oaths have been taken, it is not mentioned. It is understood, and that is, Inna ad-deena la waqi'i, inna ma tu'aduna la sadiq, just as we found in Surah Zariyat, in the Sreve Mursalat, so there, you know, we find this, Muqsam alayh, or what this oath Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking, that is, Inna ad-deena la waqi'i, inna ma tu'aduna la sadiqun, wa inna ad-deena la waqi'i. Whatever is being promised to you is absolutely true, it will happen, and the day of recompense, day of, day of judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is definitely coming, so there is no doubt in it. Upon the day when the shaking thing will shake, and then after it, there will follow a next blast. These refer to two blowings of the trumpets. The first day, that is Asa. When the trumpet will be blown, the earth and the mountains will shake like anything. Ya Yuhannas, ittaku rabbakum inna zalzalat asaat is shayyun azim. An earthquake, a quaking, a shaking, a terrible shaking. But after some time, then there will be Yawbul Qiyamah, the day of resurrection. It will be followed by the second blowing of the trumpet, when all will be revived. So these are the two. And we have read it in Surah Zumar also. وَنُفِقَ فِي السُّورِ فَسَائِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّبَابَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْغَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ سُمَّ نُفِقَ فِيهِ أُخْرَى فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْزُرُونَ So these two blowings of the trumpet. قُلُوبٌ يَوْمَئِذِينَ وَاجِفَا Many a heart on that day will be throbbing in fear. Absaruha khashia. Their glances, their eyes will be downcast. Yaquluna inna la marduduna fil hafira. That will be the picture of the day of judgment, or the day of the recompense. But today what they are saying? Yaqulun. Today they are saying, Ainna la marduduna fil hafira. Are we indeed to be restored to our former state? Shall we be resurrected when we die and we become bones and clay and, and dust? What? When we shall have become bones, decayed? They say that would then be a losing return. This is a taunting. You know, okay, yes, as Muhammad is saying, if we are returned, definitely, then it is going to be a very losing return. We will be in loss. But they were not believing in it. But it shall only be a frightening shout. Zajra. Frightening. And behold, they shall all appear on the gathering plain, the Maidan Hash, the plain on which all human souls will be gathered. Halataka Hadith of Musa. Has the story of Musa come to you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is Nadahu Rabbuhu Bilwad al Tuwa? Just recall, when his Lord called him in the sacred valley of Tuwa. Now this has come many a times and in details. Here in the, the small surahs, this mention is very brief. Go to Fir'aun. Surely he has exceeded all limits. And say to him, would you like to be purified? Would you like your soul to be purified? Wahdiya ka ila rabbi ka fataksha. And may I guide you to your Lord so that you have his fear? Fa'arahu al-ayat al-kubra. Then he showed him the biggest sign, the miracle, the staff turning into 
a serpent. But what happened? He belied and disobeyed. So Madhbara Yasra. Then he turned back hastily, striving to defeat Musa, wasalam, gathering the sorcerers, magicians, so that there should be, you know, a competition between the two, so that it is proved that Musa is nothing but a sorcerer or a magician and nothing else. So he tried his best. Fahashara Fadada. Then he gathered the people and cried out, Nada. He cried out and shouted, and he said, Fakal. Ana Rabbukumul Ala. I am your Lord, the Most High. This is very important, and we have read it before also. That he said, Alay Salim Mulkobis is not the kingdom of Egypt under me. I am the monarch. I am the sovereign. All this irrigation system is under my control. So this is the political sovereignty, which he is saying that I am Lord. So this aspect of Tawheed we have discussed in full. The Tawheed, on the one hand, Tawheed of creed, Tawheed fil aqeedah. On the other hand, Tawheed fil amal, Tawheed fil in practice. And in practice, you know, if somebody is following his wishes and desires and lusts and contravening the, the, the demands of, and laws of, of the Sharia, then he has made his nafs his God, his Allah. فَأَخَذَ اللَّهُ نَكَالَ الْآخِرَةَ وَالْأُولَىٰ So Allah seized him with his punishment of the hereafter as well as the present. The, he was seized and drowned with his armies. This was the punishment of here, of this world. And then the punishment of the hereafter is the fire of the hell. So these both punishments. Inna fi zalik al liman yaksha. Surely in that is a lesson for him who fears. Whosoever has fear of Allah in his heart, then this story of Moses and Fir'aun, there is a lesson in it for, for them. Are you more difficult to, to be created? Or the, or the heaven that he has built? When man thinks that it is difficult, it is impossible, how we can be resurrected? But what does it mean? They think that the creation of man is greater, harder, more difficult. For that, that Allah who has created the heavens. Are you more difficult to create? Amit Sama or the heaven? Banaha. He built it. Rafa Samkaha Fasallaha. He raised up high its canopy and then perfected it and balanced it. Waqtasha Lailaha Wakraja Dohaha. And he darkened its night and brought out its bright morning. Wal Arda Bada Zalika Dahaha. And after that, he spread out the earth. Akhraja minha maha wa maraha. He brought out there from its water and its grazing grounds. Coming all, everything coming from this earth. We dig a well and take out water from the earth. The tube well is going down and water is gushing out. In the same way, all these pastures, all these gardens, all this vegetation is from the earth. وَالْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ دَحَاهَا أَخْرَجَ مِنْهَا مَاهَا وَمَرْعَاهَا وَالْجِبَالَ أَرْسَاهَا And the mountains, he fixed them firmly. مَتَاعَلْ لَكُمْ وَلِيَنْعَامِكُمْ Note this ayah. This ayah will be repeated in the next surah also. Because this surah and the next surah Abbas, they are in the form of a pair. مَتَاعَلْ لَكُمْ وَلِيَنْعَامِكُمْ all this is a provision for you and your cattle. Faizajati Tamatul Kubra. So when that great calamity will come, that is Asa, Yawma Yatazakkarul Insanu Masa, that day man will remember and recall what he strived for, what he worked for throughout his life, what was his goals. 
So actually that day he will recall. يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَاهَ I spend my life in what pursuits? For gaining what? وَبُرِّذَتِ الْجَحِيمُ لِمَنْ يَرَاهَ And the hellfire will be made evident for whosoever sees it. فَأَمَّا مَنْ تَهَا So whosoever exceeded the bounds, bounds specified by the Lord, bounds of the Sharia, bounds of the divine law, وَآسَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا and preferred the life of this world. فَإِنَّ الْجَعِيمَ يِلْمَعْوَى Surely then, the fire of hell shall be his abode. Now these two things. فَأَمَّا مَنْ تَغَى You know, in pursuit of our passions, emotions, our desires, our lusts, this worldly lusts, and so on and so forth, we cross the limits of the Sharia. We cross the limits of halal and haram. And number two, we prefer this life to the life of the hereafter. Now one thing is that you deny that there is no life hereafter, no resurrection. That is kufr of a very high degree. But even if you say, I believe in it, but your attitude in this world is showing that you have preferred this life to that. You are working, working more for this life than that. You attach more importance to the comforts and gains of this life than that of the hereafter. So this is what is said here. And whosoever prefers this life of this world, surely his abode will be the hellfire. On the contrary, the one who kept fearing and shivering with the idea that one day he will have to stand before his Lord for questioning, for reckoning, for nahan nafsan hawa. And he restrained his baser self, the animal instincts, from the desires and mean and lusts and desires of this world. So these are again two. There were two things. Amma man taga. وَآسَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنِيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْبَابَ As against that two things. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ Whosoever was fearful that one day he will have to face his Lord, stand before him for the questioning. And as a result of that, وَنَّهَنْ نَفْسَ عَنِ الْحَوَى He pulled the reins of his inner libido from all the things which are forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَعْوَى For such people, the garden is going to be the abode. يَسَلُونَ كَانِ سَعَى But these people, they are asking you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, about the, that hour, that when it will come to pass, when they have no other argument, the last thing, you know, they should say, okay, when will it happen? Tell us. Or bring that chastisement. But here Allah says, يَسَلُونَ كَانِ سَعَةِ اَيَّانَ مُرْسَعَةِ They are asking you, questioning you, about that hour, when it will come to pass. فِي مَانْ تَبْلِنْ ذِكْرَاهَا What concern to you of its declaration? You have no connection with that. This is with us. We shall decide. And we know it. It's not your job to tell people when it will come. إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ مُنْتَحَاهَا your Lord is, to your Lord, is the goal thereof, or it concerns only your Lord. Only He knows when that hour will come. Innama anta munziru man yaksha. Your position, your duty, O Muhammad sallallahu is only to warn those who fear it. If they have some fears in their hearts, well, that fear will increase. They will be motivated to take up, to take to the right path. So that is your duty. That's your job. The day they see it, it shall be as if they had but lived in this world for only one evening or in addition a morning or more. And that's all. All this life. It might have been 80 years, 90 years, 70 years. 
but it will appear to be an evening or maybe also the following morning.